look at that. There's a hook there. Wow. Good. What we need to do is find that hook. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I've got it. Okay, moment of truth. Hey, hey guys, going? how are you going? Hi, good, I'm Scott. Hi. Maury, pleased to meet Hi. you. Nice to see you again. Hi. Just been out diving. And uh, when we, we just got in the water and uh, a little fella came across and he was in his mouth, which is actually connected, unfortunately, to a hook or something down in his throat. We can't see it. He was completely tangled. We managed to unravel him completely and gave you guys a call and he's uh, sitting in the back of the boat right now waiting for some help. Recreational fishing and ingestion of fishing lures and fishing hooks or simply just entanglement from the fishing line is such a common problem for our marine wildlife. Birds are usually the most common species that we see implicated. It is a huge problem for our marine life. As Scott continues his working holiday in Australia, he's left Sydney and has now travelled north to Queensland's famous SeaWorld. Today I'm here on the beautiful sunny Gold Coast to meet with Claire Madden who's the head vet at SeaWorld but also she's incredibly dedicated to the rescue and rehabilitation of marine wildlife. Alright well let's go and catch a cormorant let's and do hope it. Uh, we don't get a chunk taken out of us. <laughs> there we go, hi there. Wow, so you can see that. that um, line just caught there. Another little hook there in his foot, actually, his foot as well. Right. Well, thank you very much for that and uh, hopefully you can help him out and get him back into the wild again. Fantastic. Well, I'll be sure to give you a call once we have a look at him today. No problem. Scott and Claire must urgently try to remove the fishing tackle before it causes potentially life-threatening damage to the cormorant's digestive system. All right, come on in. Thank you very much. You want to open the door for me? Yes. I'll go in and get him. These guys are incredibly bitey, so I'll restrain the head and body. And if you want to help me with the anaesthetics, so just bring the mask over his beak for me and we'll go from there. Perfect, sounds right, good. Let's do Ready? this. All right, so I'm just going to... Oh, is that right? Just expose that head. Yes, we'll make you better. You just want to pop that mask over here. That's it. And we just wait. So what are we expecting <laughs> with this particular procedure? Because he's got the, the, uh, the line there, but we just don't know how far the hook goes. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of these hooks do get caught up in the throat or the esophagus, but sometimes we do see it as far down as the stomach. So. We'll, we'll take a quick x-ray and determine where it is. Yeah, good plan. Once the cormorant Scott has decided to call Kevin is asleep, a tiny camera will be inserted down its throat to see how far the foreign body has travelled. What's going on on the inside? Oh, look, and he's got another one there, Scott. Wow. Oh, the poor little oh, thing. So he's got a hook in both of those feet and the fishing line down his throat. It's awful to think in his no. natural environment there's so many things that are man-made that are causing him problems. That's it, and these soft lures just look like fish to these guys. Before checking any internal damage, Scott's removing the fishing hooks embedded in the seabird's feet. How'd you go with that fish hook? Yeah, that came out fine. Great. He also discovers an old injury to Kevin's wing, with discarded fishing tackle again the likely culprit. Marine wildlife is incredibly inspiring to many people. It's a lot of the reason why we go to the ocean and we go to our waterways to see these creatures in their natural environment. But we're causing such damage to them on so many levels, habitat destruction, activities that we perform and how much they're causing injury. And for us to continue to enjoy these wonderful creatures, we do need to make some changes. Okay. Oh, wow. That is... Check this out. Look at that. So you can really clearly see it's a soft lure with the metal work and then that hook right there down in the stomach. It's really an x-ray, but also I can see that left wing where we found that wound, there's actually no fracture. The bone is completely intact. 
We have no bony involvement, so there's no evidence that this bird has a fracture, new or old. It's good news for Kevin's wing, but the X-ray has revealed the fishing tackle has moved dangerously into his stomach. All right, I'm just going to pass it. If you can just hold his head up yeah, for me. Sure. That's it. An endoscope search will help Scott and Claire find the hook's exact location. So there's no hook, no hook, no hook. There we go. I think that's a big lure in front yeah. of us. Soft plastic, oh, that. see that there. Good. What we need to do is find that hook. There's a hook there. Wow. If the sharp hook is wedged into the stomach lining, it will be causing pain and be almost impossible to remove without risky surgery. Scott, it's not embedded. It's just sitting on top of the um, mucosa there. Yep. So this is really good. So we'll just pass an instrument down now and we'll grab that hook and then we should be able to pull it through because it actually hasn't anchored in into any skin. So this is a great outcome for, for Kevin, good for the bird. <laughs> All righty. Using an endoscope, which is basically a camera at the end of a tube, we can see the lure in all its glory, which is basically sort of a rubber piece with the hook. But the great news is that the hook isn't embedded in Kevin's stomach. You've just got this little plunger apparatus up and down, which will just open and close those pincers. So no keeping problem. it closed yeah. and open when I say so. So I'll feed this down the channel. It's hoped a grappling attachment on the endoscope will help to remove the barbed hook safely. Yep, there we are. Great, we're out. Bit of a team effort. Couldn't do it without you no here. Worries. Happy to be here. <laughs> How about we get it out? Absolutely, let's do it. Scott's job is to grab hold of the dangerous hook so they can extract it. Everyone is hoping they can avoid high risk surgery. All right. There's our hook. Okay, open. Yep. Okay, got close. It. Yep. Okay, if you just want to grab, we've got the top of that hook. Yep, I've got it. Correct. It's just this little junction. So we just got to hope that hook doesn't get caught on the way up. Most animals have a structure called an esophageal sphincter. It's basically just a tightening between the esophagus, the food pipe, going down to the stomach so the food doesn't just slosh out. But in Kevin's case, it's making the lure impossible to pull out of his stomach. Let's get the stomach just as at that junction. It's been pretty tricky, isn't it? Oh, look, they're never straightforward, these cases. As repeated attempts to remove the fishing lure and hook fail, there's now a new problem. Kevin is waking up. Good anesthetics. Up and down. Oh, up yeah. Up and down. Yeah. I always find the anesthetics of birds really tricky because they have a different respiration system than we do. They've not only got lungs, but they've also got air sacs. And it does just make anaesthetics more difficult and they tend to go really deep. You can hardly hear the heartbeat and then they go really shallow and try and fly off the table. It does make for a very stressful anaesthetic. How's our patient? Yeah, fine. Yeah. With Kevin's anaesthetic back under control, Scott and Claire try one last time to retrieve the stubborn fishing tackle. It's so big. I don't know how he swallowed it in the first place. He'll probably have to have surgery. It's a disappointing outcome. Unfortunately, removing a fish hook or a lure is not a straightforward process. Sometimes we simply can't remove it, which is the case with Kevin the cormorant. You're waking up now. That does mean that we will need to do open surgery, which comes with increased risks and prolonged rehabilitation time. And unfortunately, if it is severe enough, euthanasia is sometimes our only option. All right. Kevin's surgery is scheduled for the following day. So a pied cormorant? Scott and Claire's next patient is another cormorant with the same problem, sent to her from a wildlife hospital. This particular bird came to the girls at Byron Bay Wildlife Hospital. They saw fishing line coming from its beak. They've taken an x-ray which shows quite a large fish hook sitting in the throat of this bird. I am only here at SeaWorld for just one day and to see 
two cormorants suffering with the same condition is really, really upsetting. It just shows that this is a massive problem. This guy's got a decent looking beak on him. Alrighty, in you go. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, ow, ow. I've got the head. Got the head. No. Yeah. And then we'll bring him out. There we go. All right. No more biting. And I'll just Gee. grab that head. Thank you. You want to come around the other side? Yeah. You're all good. Yeah, he got me. He got now, me. Now, you know what they usually use this beak for? Um, catching vets. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly got another one. <laughs> there we go. Unlike Kevin, the fishing tackle hasn't gone as far into the bird's digestive system. Today. Oh gosh, I tell you what, I'm so glad I'm listening to his heart right now because mine has stopped for a bit. <laughs> All right. What a day. What a day. Let's work this guy up. Claire and I are finally able to take the hook out of this second cormorant and we are very overexcited. We're overjoyed because the first cormorant, Kevin, we couldn't get that lure out. It was really tricky. So the second one, we've got to win and this guy will be able to be returned to the wild straight away. One less hook for you. Okay. Claire now wants Scott to meet some other amazing creatures ready to return to their natural home. Look at these beautiful creatures. Are they some of your patients? Yeah, that's right. So these are some of our turtles that are undergoing rehabilitation with us here at Sea Rock. Wow. Eels might swim off. Hey, how's your wound going? Hey, is that right? Good one. The passion that I have for the animals at SeaWorld and, and those out there in the wild, the love and the admiration and, and how much I adore the animals under my care, I, I suppose they are akin to being my children. So we have the SeaWorld Research and Rescue Foundation where the rescue unit is out there rescuing any marine animals that need our assistance. So these turtle patients, I can see there's an amputee there, there's one that's got a cracked plastrum so you know what do they come in for regularly? Yeah so the guys that are in here have all presented for an assortment of different things. Boat strike injury, fishing line ingestion and there's also the natural diseases that can affect these guys out there in the wild. To finish his day Claire wants Scott to help with the release of a green sea turtle that spent several months in rehabilitation. Scott this is Hagrid. Hi Hagrid. <laughs> How's it going? So you've got a Harry Potter theme going? Yeah, so the month of January was Harry Potter month. So okay. unfortunately, we've seen a lot of green turtles come to us here at SeaWorld. So we had to come up with themes every month. Okay. And what was the reason that he came to you? So he came in for floating syndrome. So he was unable to dive. His buoyancy was completely disrupted. But as you can see now, that's no longer an issue for him. Well, he needs to get out of there eventually. Should I try and grab him out? Please. Here we go. A little bit of sea turtle weightlifting. <laughs> Whoa! Okay. You right there, Hagrid? You're about to get your freedom. I know it seems a bit stressful, but you're gonna get to go and swim in the ocean again. Hey? Seeing Hagrid for the first time, he's just exquisitely beautiful. He's such a gorgeous creature. And if it wasn't for Claire and her dedicated team, this guy would have floated in the middle of the ocean until he passed. So it's just wonderful the work they do. And now the exciting day has come where we can release him back to where he belongs. The big moment. Yeah, off to the big blue. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. So we're about to be releasing Hagrid today. So we're heading up to Morton Bay, which is just um, off Brisbane. So it's just north of where we are here at the Gold Coast. And we've got a really healthy population of marine turtles, dugons, and a whole heap of marine life that live in the Morton Bay region. So we'll be taking Hagrid back there. One, that's where he was found, uh, but two, it's such a beautiful location for a marine turtle. Sounds perfect. And yeah. maybe be reunited with some of his family members. Well, let's hope. 
There's no greater feeling than being able to rehabilitate an animal to the point of release and then being there for that moment of release. You know, no words can describe that excitement and that joy that that moment does bring. I think this is looking like a really perfect spot. So let's get Hagrid back out there. Let's do it. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Okay. Ready? Where are you? Here you are. We're out of there. He's absolutely he ready is. to go. He's raring to go, isn't he? <laughs> nice and strong, that's what we want to see. Yeah. Okay, buddy. Wow, he's keen. He's very keen. See you later, mate. Good luck. That's that. It's a bit unceremonious, isn't it? They just kind of take off and don't even turn around to say thanks, but it's a good indication he was ready. He was ready. Not even a wave goodbye, though. Come on. <laughs> It truly is a great result. Not only is beautiful sea turtle Hagrid released back into his ocean home, but while we've been on the boat, the second cormorant has also been released back into the skies. And that's what we do it for, is to give these creatures respite, treatment, and then freedom back to where they belong. A couple of days later, after successful surgery to remove the fishing hook from his stomach, Kevin also happily returned home. Today's a public holiday here in Australia, but for anyone working in veterinary clinics, it's anything but. Emergency clinics will be absolutely rammed with critical cases as most general practices are closed for the day. So I've decided to skip the beach and head straight to the Animal Welfare League's Queensland Gold Coast Clinic to see what I can do to help. Take Good girl. Take Scott's first patient is a young pocket American bully who's come in with her very anxious dad. It's okay, darling. Me and Bonnie are so close, we do everything together, she's always with me. I've had her since she was 14 weeks, so since she was very young. She's just come on a first heat and I'm just worried I could see something exterior starting to come out. That's when I started to panic. It's okay darling, good girl. Hi there Nathan, hi Bonnie, hi pup, how are you? So what's happening? I'm worried she's having a, it's like it's Ooh. bulging out the back there and... Yes. Last night when that started to expose itself, I yes, started really to get started, worried. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let's get her in the consult room, mate. Great. Come on, darling. Good girl. Can we get her up on the table. Yep. Let's have a little look at you, my love. So put her head in. Girl, you are a lump, aren't you, Bonnie? Are you a lovely girl. Okay. So she's still quite young. Yes. And she's just had a first season. Do you think she's in heat now? She's definitely in heat okay, now. Fine. How do you know? Um, she started spotting blood. Right, okay, no problem. Let's just have a little look at this. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Extreme, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so, oh my gosh, baby girl. I can see that things are not well at her back end. She has a massive prolapse of her vagina out of her vulva, basically this big lump coming right out of that back area and it really looks painful. When they are entire um, and they go through the cycle, they get that real surge of estrogen yeah. and then pop, out it comes. Yeah. Um, so what happens is once it's out like that, it's prone not only to be damaged but also strangulated because it's actually going out of a hole that it's not meant to. Yeah, it's very concerning. I was so worried. I'm like, that's not right. I've no, got to... No, no. So you've done really well to bring her in in time. Great, yeah. What we need to do is try and replace it. So we'll do that by reducing its size um, and then pushing it back in. And at the same time, I'm going to have to either look at hormonal treatment to try and reduce the estrogen levels yeah. just so that things start to reduce in size or we might have to spay her. I'm in a really tricky situation right now because Bonnie is in major distress. The main driver of this condition is high levels of estrogen. 
And how can I reduce that? Well, the best way is by neutering the animal. But when you try to spay a female dog when they're in season, you have blood vessels that are about five times the size as they would normally be. So that means five times the risk of bleeding and death. Okay, baby. I know. I know, I know. There'll be more than a thermometer going up your back end quite soon, I'm afraid. Sorry, it's honey. It's okay, it's okay, darling. Hey, Nathan. Yeah? I think it's love. <laughs> Definitely is. Being a vet isn't just about treating animals, it's also being aware of the people holding the lead or carrying in the cat carrier. And in the case of Nathan and Bonnie, you can see how clearly they have an amazingly strong bond and connection. It's beautiful, really. She is a very healthy girl, so you're doing a great job with her. This is just a really unfortunate event, so oh, we just need to address that. Yeah. Hey? Yes. All right, well, do you want to give Daddy a kiss? Hey. Do you want to give Daddy a kiss? Yes. She's probably oh. not going to want to come with me. Come on then, Bonnie. Come this way, baby. Yo, you're so good. All right, Nathan, I'll give you a call in a bit. Great, right. thank you. Good girl. Good That's girl. it, good girl. Oh, I'm feeling scared and nervous. I'm just praying that she's going to be okay. So my last visit up here wasn't too well. I had to have my last dog put down here, so. Hey, Taylor, how are you going? Good, how are you? Good, so this is Bonnie. Okay. Let me pop her up on the table for you. Oh, she's a bit of a lump, as you can see. <laughs> I think what we'll do is we'll give her some pain relief. Yep. Put her on some fluids, uh, and then we'll get her into surgery and we'll go from there. Sounds good. Okay. Good girl. But as the team starts to prepare Bonnie, there's an emergency. Hey Scott, we've just had a phone call, um, potential snake bite dog coming down. Oh wow, do you know what kind of snake it is? Um, they think potential brown snake. He saw a bit of blood on the neck. Wow, okay, all right, well, I'll get outside and wait for them. Yep, all right. good. Cheers. Hey Tim, how are you going? I'm Scott, I'm the vet. How are you? Yeah, very good, nice to meet you. So, Clover's decided to play with a brown snake. Yeah. Let's get you in, okay? We'll get you sorted. All right, come on through. Come on, come this way. That's it, come on. So this is Tim and this is Clover. Oh, it's oh, okay, it's okay. okay. Now you had some photos, didn't you? So can you just show me what you've got? Good girl. Okay. All right, I mean, that looks like a brown snake to me. Yes. Let's just see what we've got. Ah, okay. So we've got a bite there. So fractured neck there, which is good. Not for the snake, obviously. <laughs> She's also chomped it on the tail. So it just depends on where she bitten the snake first. Owner Tim saw Clover with this brown snake in her mouth. And when any animal is bitten, it will turn around and defend itself. So I don't know how Clover hasn't been bitten by this incredibly venomous snake. When she had the snake in her mouth, was the snake still moving, do you think? Okay, that doesn't sound great to me. That does sound like there's a distinct possibility we could have a bite. It is, it is a young one, but even still, unfortunately, the venom that they can produce in one bite can be enough to kill people. We will do a few tests, and then if it comes out that we think likely that she has been bitten, then obviously we'll be using an anti venine I can see that she's not showing neurological symptoms, but we need to do some tests now because time is of the essence. We'll take good care of her. All right, we'll give her a bit of a kiss. How long have you had her for? Um, we've had her for about five, five years now. Okay. Yeah. Clovers, she's a rescue dog. I think she was pretty mistreated when we first found her, like she was in pretty bad shape health-wise. We actually found Clover during a failed IVF cycle, so we kind of adopted her. She was like a, you know, a little fur baby, I suppose you'd say. And then, yeah, now since we've had a successful round of IVF and Clover's really taken to him, like kind of like a big sister, I suppose. So yeah, she's absolutely fantastic. Oh, she feeds yeah. her a lot. Oh yeah. gosh. All right, Tim. Well, I can I can tell she means a lot to you, mate. So we'll do our very best. Very good. All right, buddy. All right. It's we'll okay. see you soon. It's okay, baby. While Tim settles in for a nervous wait, Scott is racing the clock. All right. All right. Good girl. There's three main tests. The first one, we just put some blood into a tube and we see how quickly it clots. The second one, we test for an enzyme that's produced when muscle is being broken down. And finally, a very specific test for the snake venom of the five most well-known snakes here in Australia. Uh, geez, her heart rate is quite fast, but being a nervous dog, it's hard to know if it's 
fast because she's nervous or fast because she's been bit by a brown snake. It takes about 10 minutes for the result to come through and it's a really anxious wait to know, has this girl been bitten by a potentially deadly brown snake? So it's been 10 minutes now. 10 minutes? Yeah. Okay, well look. It looks like a good result. Yay! Yay. Negative. Yay. Yes. It is miraculous, really, that Clover has not been bitten. Yeah, so we can see there's the one blue spot in the positive control, but actually all the rest of them are clear, including the brown one, which is the third one down. So somehow you. you managed to bite that snake and it didn't bite you, which is kind of incredible, that really, is incredible, isn't it? incredible, yes. You get to go straight home with Daddy. You don't have to stay in the hospital for days and days on end. Yes, I, you know what? You're a four leaf clover because you're very lucky. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yes. yes. Yes, you are. Good girl. Tim is anxiously waiting for any news. Hey, Tim. Hey. Hi. Hey. So, incredibly good news. She somehow has miraculously not been bitten by the brown snake. <laughs> Can you believe it? I know. So, I've said that you've got to change your name to four leaf clover now. <laughs> That's why we called her Clover, because she was lucky that we found her. Uh, and now she's lucky again, huh? She's a lovely girl as well. Yeah, absolutely pumped, man. Yeah, just can't wait to get her home. All right, Tim, all the best. Yeah, all thanks. Right. Safe travels. Thanks for your time, you all as right. well. No worries. No more brown snakes, you. <laughs> all right. Good Very girl. Good. All right, see you Thank later. Thank you. Yep, Bye. take care, Doctor. With Clover out of danger, Scott can now turn his attention back to Bonnie and her painful prolapse. Right, my love. He's hoping he can successfully manipulate it back inside Bonnie's body without having to anaesthetise her. We're just flushing the vaginal prolapse just to try and encourage it to go back in. So basically use a liquid that uh, has a higher concentration than the fluid within it and that will then shrink it a little bit. So we're doing that now. She is breathing up quite a bit. We've given her some pain relief but being a brachycephalic or flat faced dog they do struggle to breathe at the best of times, so she's getting a bit of oxygen as well. Okay, sweetie. Okay. 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 Right, so I'm just going to try and see how far I can replace it manually. All right, babe. Nice, sweetie. Oh, it's all right. I've seen my wife give birth to four kids. It does get worse than this. I'm afraid, it, but it does. This is nothing. This prolapsed vagina is kind of like an inverted tube and I need to push that tube back in to where it needs to be. But the force that I need to apply is fairly significant because as it's been outside of Bonnie's body, it has swollen. So now I need to push it back and it doesn't really want to go back. So the good news is that it's not uh, desiccated or dried out and she's not been chewing at it either. So. Yeah. So that's all good news, but unfortunately I can't get it back in with her awake, so we are going to have to give her an anaesthetic. Yeah, yeah. As the nurses are preparing Bonnie, I then scrub up, put my scrubs on, and I'm ready for action. All right, so we're going to give you some anaesthetic now, baby. All right, and we'll try and sort out your back end. All right, don't look. All right, good girl. Right, okay. Okay, let's go. Come on. Now I've got Bonnie in the surgery suite, I have a really good opportunity to observe this structure. It's pretty angry, it's very large, it's very engorged with blood, and it's gonna be really tricky to get it back where it needs to be. Oh, go on. It's going, oh, the table's moving. <laughs> I couldn't do it while she's awake is because the amount of force I'm having to apply is fairly significant. You kind of expect this level of force applied when you're doing it to a cow, not to a dog. But hey, here we are. I can imagine watching a moment like this behind the scenes of a vet practice or a doctor's where you go, wow, there's a lot of force being applied there. But actually, we need to do exactly that to get the job done. Okay. Right. So, it's pretty much replaced now. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So now, now we've got it in. I've got to keep it in with a stay suture. So yeah. we're going to just do like a purse string. Now I've managed to replace the prolapse. It is desperately still trying to come out. So the way I can keep it in place is by performing a purse string suture. If you think of a drawstring bag or a sleeping bag, you basically have something around the outside. When you pull it, it 
tightens it together. So what I'm doing is that same kind of technique on Bonnie to avoid the structures coming back out again. Okay, I'm, I'm happy, I've, I've finished. Everything that should be inside is now inside, so she can wake up. Yeah. On balance, I feel the right thing is to try and live through the next seven days while she's in season. And hopefully after that point, the estrogen levels will drop and everything will calm down. But to try and perform a spay, a neutering on her right now is just too risky. I know. Oh, well, girl. Three hours later, it's time for Bonnie to be reunited with Dad Nathan. Hi there. Oh, Bonnie, hello, darling. <laughs> oh, there's your daddy. <laughs> wow, well, the tail's going. So she's done really well. Yeah. Um, you can see the back end's looking a bit neater now. Yeah. There's the yeah. suture to hold everything in. Yeah. Um, you are alright? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, she means a lot to you, doesn't oh, she? Oh, everything. Yeah. Yeah. She's a lovely dog. Yeah. Today was quite stressful, just waiting on the call. Just, I just wanted to know she was safe and take her home to be happy and move on. It's, I know it's quite frightening when you see something like that. It looks like she was it's trying to shocked. give birth yeah. to an alien, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Didn't know what was going on. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I understand the last time you were here wasn't such great circumstances. No, no. It's sort of triggering a bit as well, so. Yeah, of course. I understand. She's so Okay. Good job. Good job. Well, it's lovely to see how much she loves you. Yeah. And it's lovely to see how yeah, much you love her. we've got a great bond. Definitely got a great bond, so. Good, good man. There we go, baby. Oh, good girl. She's been such a lovely girl. Look at that tail wagging. Goodness me. Bringing Bonnie out to the waiting room and reuniting out with Nathan. It's a beautiful thing. You know, you see a uh, tear in his eye. He loves this dog. And to be able to help treat the dog and get her back into his loving arms, it's, it's a special thing to be about. Given eight weeks from now, you should get a spade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's don't. best for her health. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's been yeah. so great. Oh, no worries. Have a nice evening with her. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that this time it's Thank been a happy so ending. It has been. It's happy, happy tears. <laughs> <laughs> Good. The future's bright for us. So, yeah. Sadly, no babies for her, but, but yeah, the future's bright. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you so All much. All the best. All the best. Thank Take so care. Much. Come on. Good girl. It's been such a busy day here at the shelter, so hectic, loads of patients coming in, but it's wonderful, you know, to be able to treat all these animals and to give them the care that they need and to look after their owners in the meantime. It's, it's been a wonderful day and I'm really glad that I gave up my day off on the beach. You love the show? Now check out a new experience at bondivet.com. With trusted pet advice, expert vet help, products and entertaining content, we're here to help 24-7. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.